Hello, this is an updated video to the R134 conversion that I did back in 2019. Uh, I've learned a lot more about AC over the years. I've done a lot of AC work on my other vehicles with AC. So this video is going to be updated and it's going to include some more clear information and some better steps. So in this video, we're assuming that your system can hold a charge. In other words, your system does not need any work done to it. This is not a repair video. This is just charging. I did this conversion back in 2019 and it's still working perfectly. I haven't even added any Freon yet. So without further ado, let's get started with a list of things that you need for your R134 conversion. R134 refrigerant, oil, either ester or PAG, an accumulator, and this should come with gaskets, an orifice tube, adapters for the lines, and a manifold gauge. You can use a regular gauge that comes with a can kit, uh, but the manifold gauge, it's actually pretty cheap and it can help you diagnose issues if you have a problem. You can also rent these things at any auto parts store as well. Then you'll need to get a can tap for the manifold. Uh, make sure it's for self-sealing cans. And the last item you'll need is a vacuum pump. And these can be rented as well. So now that you have all those supplies, let's talk about what you need for the line adapters. So you'll need to do this part first so you can hook up the pressure gauge or the manifold gauge. Uh, and the nice thing about these adapters is you can't put them on the wrong one. They're specific size uh, for the high pressure side and the low pressure side. The low pressure side is on the actual accumulator and this just screws directly over the top of the old R12 connection. And the high pressure side is a little bit lower near where the orifice tube is. So you'll want to start with a pressure test. Uh, this check is to see what's going on in the system before we start. If it's low, hey, that's great. That means that the uh, system may be just fine and you just need to add some Freon to it. If it's completely dry, uh, you might have a leak and you will have to do more to the system to fix that. Before we start messing with anything else, let's test the compressor to see if it works. Now you can actually unplug the low pressure switch. It's on the accumulator. You just squeeze it and unplug it. And then inside of it is going to be uh, two female connection points. Just get a paper clip, jump both those connection points and that should make your compressor turn on if the car is running. Well, as you can see, the fan is already running automatically. Apparently the fan turns on from the control of the uh, HVAC unit in the car. So even though the compressor's not on, it's still activating the, uh, the fan. So I'm gonna jump it so you can hear the uh, speed change of the motor. Hear that? You definitely hear the, the RPMs drop a little bit and you hear the click of the clutch. That's with it on. That's with it off. There, now it's on. Okay. Okay, the compressor is way down in the back on the bottom of the motor. I don't know if I can get a good shot of that. There, it's down in there. But don't do this for more than a few seconds because you can damage the compressor running the system with low or no pressure. If it doesn't turn on, if the compressor does not turn on, if you bypass the low pressure switch, you have some other kind of issue with the compressor and that will need to be fixed. If that all went hunky-dory and you know the compressor works, now let's start with the conversion process. If you have any Freon in the system, uh, you're supposed to go to a professional and have the system evacuated. So once you've done that and your system is empty, we need to check for leaks. 
So this is where you're going to hook up your vacuum pump to the lines and then turn on that vacuum pump. All right, so I've got the uh, system drained properly by a professional. Wink, wink. Okay, so now I'm going to actually turn on the vacuum pump and start pulling. Let's see what happens. So I'll pull both of these down. Let's see if this works. So I basically hook it up to the high and low pressure lines open both the valves on the low pressure and high pressure lines and then hook it to the vacuum pump. So it's going to take several minutes for it to start pulling enough vacuum for you to notice anything. Uh, you want to watch the gauge and wait till it gets close to about negative 30. It's not going to go all the way to negative 30 because of science, uh, but it's going to get close. Once it's near negative 30, close both the valves and turn the pump off. Now just wait and see if it holds a vacuum. How long is up to you, but I don't know, an hour, 30 minutes is probably a good place to start. Uh, if you're gonna test it for several hours or even overnight, you might want to unhook and close the manifold gauge lines from the system because the connections on the system, they might have a slight leak themselves. This step might be overkill, so it's up to you on how long you want to do the leak test and if you want to leave the gauges hooked up or not. If your system is holding vacuum, you can go ahead and move on to the next step. If not, you have a leak. If it's a slow leak, it's probably just a gasket. What you can do is get an AC gasket kit and then replace every single little O-ring in the entire system, including the ones that are hooked up to the compressor, and then try again. If your vacuum test was good, let's go ahead and start tearing stuff off. So the first thing you need to remove is the accumulator. The accumulator is really easy to get out. It's just two giant nuts. You unscrew those and then there's a bracket that's holding the center of it to the car. Remove those and that will come right out. And then you can get to the orifice tube. The orifice tube is in the high pressure line right next to the manifold connection for the high pressure side. You just undo those two fittings and pull on it a little bit and it will separate. The orifice tube is inside of this little skinny part of the high pressure line. Just get some needle nose pliers, grab it and pull it out. All right, got the orifice tube pulled out. Looks pretty clean. I know it looks terrible, but uh, uh, there's only a tiny bit of debris on it. Uh, it's just mainly dirty from the oil that's inside of it. Uh, here's the o-ring that i pulled off of it from from the fitting that was right next to it got my little gm o-ring kit and uh you know you just take them out and you size it up and you're like okay well that looks like that's the o-ring for that and then you put the new one on so that's what i'm going to do with the the fittings put the orifice tube back in okay so this is what the inside looks like uh, in the vehicle i uh, got the o-ring replaced ready to put it back together you can see all the oil that came out of it that i drained out of it Unfortunately, I had to bend this a little bit that way to get it undone because, oh yeah, that other side is bolted down. I think that's the only way to do it. So yeah, so, oh God, I don't like doing that. So I'll get it back together, tighten it down. Also, uh, there's not a lot of clearance down here to get your wrenches around. So you're just gonna have to flex it and do the best that you can because that is a wacky design. If your system still had residual Freon in it at the very beginning of all this, you may not need to replace the accumulator. If you had no pressure, you definitely need to replace it. Uh, one of the jobs of the accumulator is to remove moisture from the system. If it's exposed to the air too long, it will absorb moisture and eventually it will get to the point where it can't absorb any more moisture. So if it was exposed to the open air, you need to replace it. Remove the old accumulator, Install the new O-rings that came with the accumulator on the lines in the car. We need to transfer the low pressure switch from the old accumulator to the new accumulator. R134 runs at a lower pressure, so we need to adjust the switch a little bit. Just turn it about a quarter of a turn counterclockwise and that's about it. Once you started messing with the new accumulator, the moisture clock starts ticking. 
So it should be under a vacuum when you get it brand new. And once you remove the protective caps, it's exposed to the air and you'll probably even hear the air go inside of it. Once you take those caps off, that clock starts to tick. So remove the caps. And like I said, you'll probably even hear air entering the accumulator. This is also the best time to add oil to your system. R12 systems use mineral oil and R134 systems, the newer ones, they use PAG oil. These two oils are incompatible, so you can't mix them. You can flush your whole system if you want to remove all the old oil out of it and then add new PAG oil. If you don't want to flush your system, you will still have a lot of old mineral oil in it. So what can you do? Well, that's what ester oil is for. It's compatible with both mineral and PAG oil. You may have lost some oil when you remove the orifice tube and it might have drained out of that tube a little bit. And there's also going to be some oil in your old accumulator. When you get rid of that, you're going to lose some of that oil as well. So the whole system, it holds about six to eight ounces of oil. So you won't need to add a ton to it. Probably two to four ounces should be good. If you add too much, that's a bad thing. So what I would do is I would add about two to four ounces inside the accumulator. If a bunch came out of your hose, then you're going to have to add a little bit more. If hardly anything came out, then probably two ounces is all you'll need to add. There are oil kits that you can add oil while you're charging the system with your manifold set, uh, but that's an additional cost and I don't even have one of those. So adding oil to the accumulator is actually the easiest way to put oil in your system when you have it disassembled. You can also buy Freon that comes with ester oil built into the can already if you don't want to hassle with any of that. Now go ahead and install the accumulator in the car. You want to get this done ASAP because that clock is starting to tick. So you have less than 30 minutes after the seal on the accumulator is broken and you've let air enter the system. So hurry and get that thing hooked up. Then you want to test the system again for leaks. Pull vacuum again, but this time do it for about a half an hour. This is to get any remaining moisture out of the system. After about 30 minutes, turn it off and see if it holds a vacuum. If it holds, you can move on to adding Freon. So the original capacity of an R12 system is 2.5 pounds of Freon. 2.5 pounds equals 40 ounces. Now we're going to need 15% less now that we're converting to R134. So 15% less of 40 ounces is 34 ounces of R134. So now you can add Freon to the low pressure side slash the accumulator side. Uh, bleed the hose to get all the uh, air out of it before you get started because you don't want to add air to the system after you went through all this trouble to get it out of it. When I filled mine back in 2019, I didn't have the correct tap for the manifold set. So I just used a standard AC charge kit. It's the one with the little blue hose. Go ahead and turn the car on, turn the AC on, and then start adding Freon. As you're adding Freon, tilt the can to a three o'clock position and then back to 12 o'clock, and then do that back and forth as it's filling. After you add a can or two, the system will reach its proper pressure and start to run. However, once the system turns on, it will drop and then turn back off again. So the system's gonna continue to cycle like this for a few times. Um, and until you get it all the way up to the minimum running pressure. So you'll keep charging and then it will eventually stay on all the time. So once again, fill the system with approximately 34 ounces of 134. Here are some general numbers that you can use as a guide on your manifold gauge. It's about 20 to 30 pounds on the low side once it's fully charged and about 200 to 300 on the high side when it's fully charged. Once your system is charged and running, check your temperature at the vent to see where it's at. If it's blowing nice and cold, you're done. I hope you enjoy your AC and your Fiero.